And because this is, um, I think, the second to last session, we wanted to just bring it kind of back into plenary for the fishbowl. We've, we've done a lot. We've used a lot of different tools, different formats as we've been going through this meeting ourselves. Um, and we've been hearing so many um, inputs around trends, uh, strategies, actions, tools. And I wasn't in any of the other small groups, of course. So I just wanted to use this opportunity and link up with uh, with a few friends and, and colleagues here, uh, some of whom I haven't seen for way too long, <laughs> um, and just hear a few reflections to get us started. I'd, I'd just be really interested to know from everything that you've heard in the meeting so far, and especially maybe in your personal spaces where you work, and we have um, you know different fields here. We have humanitarian, localization, we have health. We have um, uh, maternal health, sex, sexual reproductive health sites, Giacomo participatory development, agri, drones, everything. I don't know what you're doing at the moment. Is there anything that you've been hearing now that has triggered you to think, gosh, I should really be planning, you know, strategizing, but being prepared a little bit for some of these trends that I've heard that maybe I haven't thought about before? Is there anything that you that you're thinking now that you think, okay, I need to take action on this in, in my field of work or in the networks that I'm a part of? Is there anything that, that comes to mind? And then just to say the second part, and then you can just pick from whatever it is that you want to speak to. I'm also just so inspired, like I wrote at the start, of seeing everybody again and just already seeing the linkages and the, the wanting to hook up with each other and sharing our information in our networks. Is there something that we as this loose network that we are, whether we are D groups and all of the networks that are associated with that, or whether we're K and for Dev or everything, you know, all the different community that brings us together. Is there something that you think we should be doing together around this to prepare for some of these trends or take some joint actions? So whichever of those resonate, maybe as you have been digesting what you've been hearing, Giacomo, can I give you the floor first? Oh, Saskia, nice to see you again. Um, I think that one comment which was made in the work group I, I attended was about, was correctly about the overwhelming expectations of attendance in virtual meetings we are facing nowadays, especially this was triggered uh, by the COVID, but uh, also by the the fact that organizing online uh, conferences is much cheaper than organizing face-to-face -face events much easier and now so we are overwhelmed by invitations uh, on, on attend to attend events so i was just thinking so if we are on the side of the organizers what should we do to make sure that people attend our event instead of attending 10 other events and I think that what happens today, what I can see today, is, a, is an example of an excellent organization of an online event. I'm not bored. I'm interested. I'm listening. I didn't drink coffee. I didn't run away. And I'm here. And you use tools I was not aware of. I'm sorry, I can't keep track of all the new tools which are offered every day and I'm lagging behind, but I'm pleased to be part of this uh, group of people who are interested in innovation. And I think what needs to be maintained and improved is quality. Quality of content and quality of means to deliver this quality content and to give a space, give the human space of interaction in a digital environment. And I think what happens today in this particular event is a good example. And, uh, and also what Nancy was saying, the digital divide is, is getting wider, simply because digital change is happening so fast. And I'm scared about that. I'm scared because we have seen how uh, digitalization of everything allows for individual profiling, uh, influencing, manipulation, and all bad things. And so we are all exposed to that, and we need to caution, to have a lot of caution about that. I think my three minutes are done. Thanks so much, Giacomo, for kicking us off. And yeah, I've, I've also been having a really, really great time. So thanks to all the organizers for that. 
um, Karen, might I give you the word next? Yeah, thanks, Saskia. And it's, I agree with Giacomo that this has been a very interesting space to be in. And I think that's something also I've reflected on uh, uh, the views that others have shared. And some of them have been very pessimistic as well and alarmist as well in, uh, in what the future could be. I think from my perspective, I'm more idealistic about it. From what I've seen, more people have been able to connect than before. For for me, on my own, a personal level as well, I've been included in spaces that I probably would have not um, been, ha been able to access before. So I think uh, in terms of looking ahead also, I think more can be done on that uh, to, to link up more people with each other. I think even uh, what you were talking about in the groups also, vertically within our organizations to have different levels of, of uh, people within our organizations connect uh, and be part of these platforms, not just the few individual passionate ones who generally participate. Um, yeah, so I think uh, that, and other than that, uh, in terms of the issue of misinformation as well, uh, even in my, from sitting in India, that's something I've observed as well. There's so much misinformation around, but I also think being part of these spaces where we have so much access to so many different sources, resources, and I think that may also uh, help us become more transparent in what we do because, you know, people are watching and you're also presenting online and people have more access. So I think even in terms of being more accountable, more transparent, I think in the way of um, in what I see happening as well is that uh, everything's online now and we are seeing things we, we probably have not seen before. So I feel like it's also going in that direction. So yeah, briefly from me. <laughs> Thanks so much, Mary. So also seeing how we can use the tools, right, and the spaces to create more accountability and to create more transparency, less of the closed room uh, negotiations where nobody really knows what we said. Yeah, too. Thanks so much. Um, Neil, can I go to you next? And then Hannah, could you the floor after that? Sure, thanks. Well, it's been a, a, an amazing meeting. Um, really uh, rich and like Giacomo I've uh, learned a few about a few new tools as well which were fun to use and they all worked so that's, that's another thing is that things actually work these days whereas it not only a few years ago they just often didn't and you kept your fingers crossed throughout every virtual meeting. Um, my name's uh, Neil Packenham Walsh, I uh, was the chair for D groups for six years between 2012 and 2018. Um, but my main job is uh, running HIFA, which is a community of practice in global health that has 20,000 members interacting um, on virtual discussion forums in different languages, in English, French, Portuguese, and Spanish. So I was interested in today's meeting because of course our discussions have been much broader than communities of practice um, and that uh, it appears that dgroups is have as broadening the, the the scope which has a lot of advantages but also has some challenges that would come with that as well so my my um, particular interest is how can we better manage communities of practice so that they are more participative, more inclusive, and so on, just like we were seeing in the breakout rooms. Um, I feel that communities of practice have a massively big future, but that future hasn't arrived yet because we failed to demonstrate impact enough to be able to persuade the funders to invest in this, uh, this, this methodology. I'm sure that it will improve. I think that COVID and climate change have been, for communities of practice, they are a blessing in disguise because they have forced us to be online. And of course, with climate change, we really have to now question the, uh, the value of having inter so many international face-to-face -face meetings. So I, I look, at the, I, I like to look at how the question of how face to face, particularly local face to face and global uh, virtual, how those can 
work together more effectively. Thanks. Thanks so much, Neil. And you're just opening up a whole conversation, I think, of what have all of the sharings today um, influenced you in terms of your thinking around that, right? The strategies, the tools, um, the, the, yeah, the, the disinformation, the infoterrorism. I mean, so many things have been shared. I think we need to do a little bit more processing still in terms of relating it all back to our own fields of, fields of work. But thanks for kicking us off on that. Hannah, from your space where you're working, what are some of your personal uh, reflections on this and strategies to prepare for the future, as well as maybe thinking about how we, what we could be doing together? Thank you so much for giving me the word, Saskia. And very nice to meet all of you. I feel like uh, introducing myself because I'm pretty new to this space. I haven't met several of you yet, uh, different than what I get from your uh, collective joys of being reunited, which is very nice. So um, yeah, I work at Kid Royal Tropical Institute in Amsterdam, um, where I work on sexual reproductive health and rights as a research advisor and learning facilitator. And I'm here particularly in representation of uh, one of our projects called Chernet International, which is a knowledge management platform on sexual reproductive health and rights, SRHR. Um, yeah, I, I, I had quite some reflections. I'm trying to uh, synthesize them into five main points uh, quickly. I want to echo the point uh, that was made before many times about the importance of creating safe spaces, but also I uh, want to invite us to really ask these critical questions on, um, yeah, are these safest, uh, spaces safe and accessible and inclusive to all the people that we want to be able to participate uh, on our ta uh, table. And I feel an important detail, for example, can be just asking our participants upfront, do you foresee any challenges with your participation? And then we can see what we can do about these barriers. Do we need interpretation? And all these tiny things, but that can have such a big impact. Um, and, uh, and also who, who are the facilitators and co-facilitators and what power lies with them? Uh, to 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 enable um, and ensure these safe spaces and and, and, and good collaboration. Secondly, um, on on the backdrop of that, also really the point that was made before about cyber security. I feel like there's so much that still needs to be done, and we really need to invest in this now. It, it feels, at least from my experience, we're always one step behind catching up with what's going on, and these threats might have an immense impact on all the work that we do. Um, and especially again from, from my work on SOHR, where we're dealing with sensitive issues in often restrictive sessions set, um, and settings and with a rise of opposition and, and resistance. Um, this, this is extremely important and I feel we're neglecting it um, still, although we're aware uh, and we keep hearing this news all the time. So this is maybe also something to bring to this group. Could, could we have a learning session on that? I don't see enough uh, on that happening yet. Um, yeah, just shortly also becoming more strategic in terms of what needs to be online, offline, hybrid, and really thinking like who are the, the people we're missing out either or. Um, uh, and um, I was also reflecting from an SRHR perspective, this further relates also to service provision, like how we complement services, how we can complement digital self-care with referrals and mechanisms in person and how we facilitate those and how we learn from these very often fragmented people working on these topics um, together. Same for sexuality education, how can we ensure that young people safely access SRHI information online, but still builds uh, onto other support systems that we were using before, mainly like parents, teachers, and uh, community leaders, and so forth. Um, my fourth point um, that I wanted to make uh, is related really to also being flexible with your audience and preferred platforms. Uh, and we've touched upon this a lot today, but what for me are still are challenges in my work is how do you deal with this balance between centralized and decentralized ways of working then if these platforms are not the same between all the different stakeholders you're dealing with and, and how much level of, of, of ownership can there then be if there still needs to be the centralized coordination after all. Um, and, and there's a very strong power holder there. So I think that's still something um, that we are figuring out, uh, although we, we've become more flexible with using different platforms, but how do we bring it together in international collaborations? Um, and sorry I'm taking so long, but the last point I really want to make, uh, because I actually thought it was 
my my largest reflection from this meeting and i really want to say i personally enjoyed your anecdotal stories so much uh, and hearing how you learned um a lot about um change over time so thank you for sharing uh, um point however i would really like to stress um something that has been missing for me today which is the power of young people um and i would really like uh, i would like to invite you uh, in your work to make space for the creative and innovative ideas of the younger generations uh, from my, from what I could tell, and I'm judging you here by the people that had their cameras on, but in this room, we, me with my 29 years, I might have been the youngest person invited today. Um, so, uh, yeah, I think a session talking about the future, our future, I consider that really crucial to also dialogue with younger generations, actually much younger than me, <laughs> who have so much knowledge uh, on this matter. So that was, yeah, just really something I wanted to to stress here and thanks for hearing me out. Thanks, Hannah. And and point well taken. How can we talk about the future when the future is not in the room, right? And uh, Han Hannah and Farini, I think we have uh, the youngest members on this final fishbowl, which is great. Um, we still have maybe one or two minutes. Is there something that either uh, Neil or Giacomo or Tarani wants to reflect on what others have said in the fishbowl? Or if there's somebody who really wants to come in um, and share something that hasn't yet been said that you feel would really deserve a bit of airtime, that would be fantastic. Um, so please put your hands up if you if you do from the participants. Neil, I'm seeing you. I'm just seeing if yep. there's anybody else that also still would like to come in and share a few reflections. Um, I'm not seeing anything in the participants list now. So Neil, please do take the floor. Thank you. Over to me. Yes. Sorry. Okay, sorry, sorry. Uh, the I just wanted to say um, that in the last couple of years, I've um, reached out to um, Japigo and Path, and together we have produced a directory of communities of practice in global health. Um, and Luis Ortiz is uh, coordinating this, and he's with us today. So that's that's. Uh, um, Great. Uh, there was something else I was going to say, but I can't remember what it is now. So I'll pass over. Thanks. And I do see that Rocio, you've put your hand up. Please, um, Pierre, could you add her to the fishbowl? Um, no, I just wanted to say uh, we talk about the importance of involving young people, and it's super important. I think we should also not forget about bridging between the older generations and newer generations because each one contributes with something and the richness is in between, is in this bridge. Thank you. I see Hannah nodding, so I think, I think she's in agreement. Giacomo, final uh, reflections from you, and then I think I need to hand over to Christian. So please go ahead and thanks everyone for sharing all your thoughts. Yeah, I just wanted to make a consideration. I mean, for uh, every young people I come across, in my work, I always tell them, invest in being part of serious discussions, because this will build your reputation and influence your future. And being on a D group and being, or, or, or on a similar platform, being active, uh, sharing uh, intelligent uh, comments and content and content creates your reputation. And nowadays, uh, the reputation online is the first thing which is going to influence your job, career, and whatever. And I personally must say, I started with the electronic discussion list with the e-groups uh, early 2000. And I was one of the first users of e-groups. And that has influenced my personal career and my personal reputation and my personal engagement in development. So this is always a recommendation, the value of this kind of communities, which are not communities on how to cook a pancake, okay? Which are communities which are devoted, the D groups, devoted to development. And for people in development, this is a must come shop if you want. Thanks, Giacomo. And, and maybe just to, to link that back to, I think, one of the first sessions, the opening session, Steve, your story was very much the same, right? How you came out of school 
uh, and then into the online space and then started uh, engaging with it and profiling yourself there and, and look at the, the amazing organization you've set up and the impact you've made in uh, mHealth and uh, ICTs for, for, for development in Northern Ghana. So I think that looks back really nicely, Giacomo, to all of the, the stories and your recommendation that you make. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for taking uh, this space.